Have you ever wanted to command fire? Burn places down? Blow stuff up? Burn people up? If the answer to those questions is yes, then Fire Commander is not the game for you. Fire Commander is a strategy game in which you are in command of firefighters and emergency vehicles, and your goal is to try and extinguish fires, rescue as many civilians as you can, and occasionally try and save items from the fire, like important paintings, for example. Fire Commander is developed by Atomic Wolf and Pixel Crow Games, and it is essentially the spiritual successor to the Fire Department series, which came out back around the early to mid-2000s. There were three of those games, and I believe they were more popular in Europe than anywhere else in the world, but I went back and I played those games, and they definitely have a whole bunch of elements that are very similar to Fire Commander. That being said, though, Fire Commander has some cool elements of its own that help set it apart and make it a pretty cool and unique game. I hear you. One of the neat things about Fire Commander is that in between missions you have a fire station that you continuously come back to. This is like a central hub so as you complete missions and you earn money you can come back to the fire station and perform a bunch of different upgrades. For example you can upgrade your trucks so that they refill your firefighters water faster you can upgrade your firefighters themselves so that their water tanks last longer. You can perform a whole bunch of different upgrades there and so over the course of the game your fire station is becoming more and more effective so not only are you doing better in the missions but in between missions any of the firefighters that are in the gym or even like the break room are getting more bonuses than they would have if you hadn't performed the upgrade. So it's really cool that there's a sort of hub that you continuously come back to and that's something that was not in the fire department series of games. Something else that I really like about Fire Commander and is probably my favorite aspect of the game is the active pause system. So during missions at any time you can pause the game and basically move the camera around, issue orders, and just scan the situation and as soon as you unpause all of the orders that you gave will be carried out. So this makes it so it's less of a stressful, fast-paced game where you're trying to multitask all these things in real time, and it makes it more of a slower, more strategical game where you can take as much time as you need. You can look at where all the different fires are at, look at who you have on your roster, who should you send where, so on and so forth. And I love that that makes it more of a, a, a thinking man's game than a game that's just all about being really fast and having like a uh, like a StarCraft II APM or something. It's definitely not a fast-paced, arcadey game. It's, it's more of a strategical game where you're trying to make these careful decisions about uh, where to allocate your resources and which fires to tackle first, etc., etc. Speaking of tackling fires, there are five types of firefighters that you get throughout the game. You have basic firefighters these guys don't have any real special capabilities they just put out fires they you know they're just your regular old firemen you have paramedics who are capable of resuscitating any victims that have fallen unconscious you have technicians which are able to use a power saw to get through gates and big metal doors and also activate different computer terminals you have high altitude firefighters. These guys are really cool. They have these grappling hooks that they can use to climb up on balconies or even scale down cliffs so they can reach high places or even really low places that other firefighters wouldn't normally be able to get to. And then finally you have the special operations firefighters which wear these big hazmat suits. And these guys can go in and safely fight the fires that are putting out toxic fumes. They can also safely work around electrical fires, so these are your guys who you want to send in to fight really dangerous fires that would push away any of the other types of firefighters. When you have all these different types of firefighters together, that's where the missions become really strategic. So you have to decide where are you going to send your technicians to, are you going to have them use their saws to cut through certain doors, 
Are you going to have your high altitude guys climb up to a certain place? Are you going to send your special operations firefighters in to fight toxic fires? Or are you going to have them assist with some of the less dangerous fires first? So you have all these decisions to make and it feels like because of that, these missions can sort of be tackled in a, a ton of different ways. Fire extinguished. In addition to the firefighters, you also have control over several different emergency vehicles. So you have an ambulance, a water tanker that is used to refill your way. firefighters water, and I'll get back to that here in just a second. You have a sort of regular fire truck with a sprayer on the front of it that can put out fires itself. So it, it almost acts as like a support firefighter. And in some of the later story missions, you even gain access to different call-in abilities. Like you can call a helicopter in to drop a whole bunch of water in like a big circular area. You can call a plane that comes in and it drops water in sort of a wide area, like a wide rectangle. So you get some special abilities like that that can sort of help turn the tide and put things in your favor. Now going back to the water, this is a bit of a source of controversy. I've seen lots of people on the forums and even in the reviews complaining about this. So in Fire Commander, there are no actual fire hoses or fire hydrants to worry about. Your firefighters essentially just carry these portable water tanks. Once their portable tank runs out, they then have to go back to your water tanker truck and refill and once they've refilled they can go back and start to fight the fire again. I've seen lots of people that are just really upset about that. They hate how unrealistic it is and how silly it seems but I found that I, I really didn't have that much of a problem with it. It definitely isn't realistic but I like how it results in gameplay that is very much about resource management. You always have to sort of keep an eye on which of your firefighters is running low on water. You have to be careful not to let them run out in a crucial situation. You have to make sure that your water tanker truck is positioned in a good spot to where if a firefighter needs to get to it in ample time, they can do so. So, like I said, I don't have a problem with that. I can understand why people don't like how it's unrealistic, but I think gameplay-wise, it works out really well and results in a very solid gameplay experience. Now one thing that I found really interesting about this game is how it handles its missions. I expected this really straightforward campaign where you just play mission A, mission B, and then you go to mission C, and then I expected just a bunch of missions that were done in a very linear fashion. Instead, you have just a, a fairly small number of main story missions. I think there's just over a handful. But in between the story missions, you have a whole bunch of side missions that you can access on this sort of dispatch screen. You have to complete these in order to unlock story missions, but the good news is that you can play these in any order. Something else that's really nice is that you can go back and you can replay any of these missions, even the story missions, not just the side missions. And that's a really good way to gain experience for new firefighters that you recruit and to rack up on money in order to upgrade your equipment. And I also found that it was just really fun and rewarding to level up my guys and beef up my equipment and then go back and play an old mission that had given me a lot of trouble before only to breeze through it like it was nothing. It's almost like when you play an RPG and you've got this enemy early in the game that's just whipping you and then at some point you come back when you're a much higher level and just demolish it. It's kind of the same thing with this game. It sort of feels good to just go back to those old missions and walk right through them like it's nothing. So overall, I think Fire Commander is a great little strategy game, and it only costs about 15 bucks on Steam, so if you like what you see here, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's not a perfect game. It does have some problems that I found. For example, the performance can vary quite a bit from mission to mission, and some of the largest story missions had some huge frame rate spikes and just frame rate problems in general. I also found that the firefighter AI was pretty inconsistent and the pathfinding could be wonky. For example, sometimes you'll have a fire that looks like your guy should easily be able to reach, but he'll refuse to go to it. And you'll also have occasions where there will be a fire breaking out right near a guy and he'll just be standing there taking damage instead of putting it out. Something else that bugged me is that there's no way to make your firefighters board any of the vehicles. They can't get on any of the fire trucks or anything. so. 
when it comes to traveling long distances, they basically just have to sprint everywhere. And it seems kind of silly. It'd really be nice for them to be able to get on the fire truck and drive there and then disembark. But unfortunately, you can't do it. That is something that was in the fire department games. So why they didn't put it in this one is really beyond me. It seems kind of ridiculous. Nonetheless, all those things aside, I still think it's definitely a game that's well worth playing, and those issues didn't detract too much from the fun, at least for me. I really had a good time playing through this game. Like I said earlier in the video, I especially loved the active pause system, the way that it allowed me to pause the game at any time and scan the situations, determine who was going to go where, and just unpause the game and watch all these commands be carried out at once. It was just really cool to see all my guys working in different areas and watching them all sort of do their own thing. And it's especially awesome when you have these missions where everything just seems to go right and you put out all these fires really quickly and you save everyone. It just feels awesome. So if you guys have any questions about the game, feel free and ask. I'll put a link to the Steam store page in the video description so you can check it out if you're interested. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this to be informative. And this is Chubbs signing out. Fire extinguished.